student I wanted to talk about is Rosalie. This is a young woman who was very shy the first day, was not speaking much English at all, would respond often in Spanish, and just didn't feel confident speaking English, even though she knew quite a bit of English. It, it, you couldn't tell um, until later on in the program. And you could see as she continued to be affirmed in the program and encouraged, and among her peers and with the staff, you could see her really develop and grow. And, and how much English she spoke at the end of the program, not just with the staff, but also with her peers, was quite startling and exciting to see at the end of the program. Um, on the final day, she was the one that was raising her hand to volunteer to pass out programs, and she was the one that wanted to speak to every audience member at the door. So it's just really great to see the growth that an intensive program like this can provide academically, socially, in building confidence and and just a sense of, of worth and place in, you know, in the state of things. Another one. But you look angry. Another one. Her smile. Open your eyes. Okay, the Julius Caesar production that you just directed, there was a very strong core choral voice. Yeah. The, the play isn't actually written with a chorus necessarily, but it was one way in for us especially to bring in the more nervous young people who didn't want to have to say a line on their own necessarily. Everybody ready? One, two, three. Peace, hold, let us hear him. Friend. Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. Well, we started on day one working with choral voices with all kinds of theater and acting games where they're asked to say something all together. Then they're asked to say something as a, as a pair. They're asked to say something in a trio. Yes, all right, you want to start over? Yeah. <laughs> And just building on those day by day helped them you know, by the end of this program to be able to speak up in that full group, to be able to speak up individually in front of an audience. have a success in um, approaching a very difficult text and then you get to get a sense that you understand this, that you master mm -hmm. it, that, that success leads to the next one. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is especially notable that these are second language learners. These are students who English is not their first language mm -hmm. and they are decoding Shakespearean English. Tactics. We have calming down the crowd, trying to pacify them. When you play. Manipulate. Ooh. Make you look like the good guy. Trying to do that. Making them look like the good guy. I'm the good guy. I just killed a guy, but... I'm the good guy. Exactly. Exactly. Most of the Shakespeare programs have multiple staff involved and usually the staff is also performing. So to have um, Tony Jones, or our, our teaching artist from Enchanted Circle Theatre, a part of it um, meant that we had a professional performing artist who could be, be, a, t be a teacher but also be a, an equal, um, an actor in the ensemble and really model and encourage kind of appropriate discipline, actor discipline. Um, and professionalism and dedication to your role and your lines and the work that goes into it. Yeah. What they did backstage was huge. 
huge. With young people, you, you know, if the director's out running tech or the director's out looking at the whole picture, um, you need people backstage to really, and those could be student leaders and they can also be staff and ideally you have both. Try habit and let slip the dog. The other thing I wanted to talk about was how utilizing theater in an educational program really levels the playing field. When you see um, a program where there are various stages of people learning English, you know, in this program in particular, we had you know one student who was probably at a level one or level two English language. He probably out of all the students in the class knew the most about Roman history. He had kind of a background knowledge that some of the other students didn't have and was able to contribute that. And then you see, you know, people taking on leadership, whether it be backstage or on stage, that really levels the playing field and anyone who felt a little insecure in the beginning has found, by the end of the process, has found their place in things and found some sense of empowerment and some kind of leadership in the group. And that does a lot for building an ensemble, um, building a team, and when they go back to high school, how they conduct themselves and how they, how much they believe in themselves when they're put with their peers to, you know, make things happen in school or make things happen in their family. That empowerment transmits out into their world, into the various stages of their life and parts of their life. Look, I draw a sword against conspirators. Till Caesar, trick and dirty ones. Be well of me. I was not born to die a brutal sword. Can you share a little bit about the woman who played Brutus? She was a powerhouse. She showed a lot of focus and discipline early on, but she wasn't one to get silly or get very big in front of her peers. She was so dedicated. You know, she would come up to me afterwards and kind of repeat something from an acting exercise we had done and, and said, you know, how, how do I work on my facial expressions? You know, how, mm -hmm. what is this moment, you know, where Brutus is, is trying to understand his internal feelings? Like, how do I express that physically? Right. She was one of those students that really wanted to go deeper into her acting terminology and the process of an actor, and how you take on a role and make it authentic. Why are you the ones doing this? This relates to what you were just We're telling everybody. Brutus about being oh, a little oh, yes. yes. Because of the destiny and how we're small and we big and we're weak in his eyes and we're gone into other people's eyes. We're letting ourselves be weak. We're letting ourselves have the falling sickness. Not anymore. Well, I'm thinking about the work of Enchanted Circle and we're as we integrate the arts directly into the schools, into everyday classroom life, we're not, our goal is not to really create actors. Our goal is to create um, inspired students who are ready to tackle any piece of literature, who are able to write creatively about anything and find their way in. And we're really developing whole students and whole people who are ready to present themselves publicly and, and collaborate. And I guess the transfer, the transferable skills of theater um, is so at the sort of core of what we do.